Hello and welcome to uh, the WorldViz VSS presentation on our eye tracking analytics tool. So thanks everybody who's joined. Um, we'll give it just a couple of minutes here while we wait for some folks to join us. Uh, we see the folks are coming in at the moment. Uh, my name is Dan. So uh, been a longtime VSS presenter. You guys have probably met me in person back when we had in person. Uh, conferences and meetings and everything. But for now, I hope that you guys enjoy this uh, brief presentation that we put together for you. Um, it's going to be a pretty cool presentation. It's mostly going to be led by uh, Seda Rabadi. He's going to be going step by step through uh, the eye tracking tools that we actually have for researchers. So stick around. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun. I think we'll just give this uh, one more minute here. And then one thing uh, for you guys all to, to maybe keep in mind is we'll actually be doing a second presentation later today uh, where we'll have um, a kind of a cool and informal VR meeting uh, using the Mozilla Hubs tool. So if any of you have access to uh, a VR headset or uh, all you really need is just a computer and, uh, and a, a browser to join this VR meeting a little later today, but that'll be a lot of fun for you uh, to kind of come in and talk to us and have more of a, an informal meeting space. So um, we'll be sending out links to that as well. Um, one thing that we will send out that I'm gonna send out to the chat right now is actually uh, some links. Uh, what Sato is gonna be doing is uh, walking us through a presentation um, of our Vizard software. And you guys at home, if you have a PC, will actually be able to follow along. If you, uh, I'm gonna send a chat out right now uh, to all attendees where you guys can download uh, our Vizard software and also a little uh, experiment package that we've put together for you all to try as well. So uh, I'm gonna send that now to the chat. Um, so if you want to try and follow along at home, uh, go ahead and download these different pieces that we have here. And here's uh, Matthias hey, Push as well, also <laughs> Just saying hi to the rest of the crowd here. Yeah, perfect. So I'm just sending out everybody the, the links right now. Um, so the different links that I've just sent out, we've got the download for Vizard, uh, the download code, and then you can also, uh, if you want to register for our other presentation that's gonna be taking place, at 5 p.m. Eastern, you can do that as well. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump right in here. Um, so let's go ahead and, uh, and show you guys how to build a VR experiment from starting from zero to experiment in uh, about six minutes. So uh, today on the call, we've got Matthias who just jumped in and we've also got Seda who's gonna be our main presenter as well. Uh, myself, I am uh, the head of sales here at WorldViz. So uh, if you guys have ever kind of reached out to us before, you might have had a chance to talk to me. Um, we'll be, you know, just walking you through this experiment today and uh, excited to, to, to get your feedback and, and uh, see if we can set you up with something that you can actually work with uh, right out of the box. So here's a quick just rundown of the things that we'll be uh, doing today, and then I'm going to hand it over to Matthias. Uh, Matthias is going to give you guys a little bit of an overview and background, especially in what we've done in the past in the Vision Science Society. Uh, after that, we're going to have Sato go step by step through how to set up an eye tracking experiment with our pretty cool uh, eye tracking analytics lab tool. Uh, that's an add on to our Vizard software. So that's why we sent out that download to, to download Vizard. Uh, you can just click on it and, and download it directly. Uh, that'll be the free version of Vizard, um, but it'll give you pretty much uh, what you need to get started and, and have an idea of how this tool works. Uh, Sato's then going to talk about the additional features of this eye tracking analytics lab, which is the add on to Vizard, um, and show you exactly how to set up your own experiment. Uh, that'll really be covered in a kind of a getting started with Vizard uh, section. And then we'll talk about how to connect different eye tracking hardware, things like the HTC Vive Eye Pro, uh, Toby Eye Trackers, and uh, the Pupil Labs Eye Tracker as well. Then Sato's going to do just a quick rundown on how you guys can get different 3D models. Uh, it's really cool, you know, it's 2020. There's so many different tools that are available now compared to five, six years ago in terms of just being able to create your own content uh, from asset libraries that are online. Uh, something that we do when we do our webinars, so this is something that we've been doing uh, a lot lately since we've all kind of gone down into lockdown. 
uh, is we will do a question and answer section at the very end of the webinar. So uh, you guys can actually submit your questions directly to our team. We'll be copying and pasting uh, the questions that we can answer you know, in a, in a reasonable way at the end of the presentation and going through those in detail as much as we can. Um, just to kind of keep in mind, uh, we won't be able to necessarily help everybody get your experiment running perfectly with the download link, uh, but we do have a support team, we have a forum, uh, so we'll be able to actually really kind of help you after the fact, after this presentation as well. So uh, stick around and we'll definitely be able to, to, to give you a hand. And if you have any questions that are com coming up during this presentation, uh, you know, high level questions about what we're talking about, shoot them our way and uh, we'll clarify as much as possible. Um, and then again, you know, we've got other webinars that we've done in the past, which are recorded and on our YouTube page now. So uh, we'd love for you guys to go and check those out. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing your questions about uh, what we're doing today. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to uh, my colleague, Matthias, and uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about uh, WorldViz and, and where we come from. Uh, thanks, Dan. I uh, hope you guys can already hear me here. Um, I'm not sure how much VSS crowd we have here right now, but um, trying to see if this works here, actually. Let's see. Sorry. Um, so. Not easy with so many windows here. Um, so I hope you can see me and hear me. Um, so we are, uh, as the WorldVis, you might have seen us at VSS. We have been one of the long-term supporters and exhibitors. In fact, I myself am a vision scientist by training. I've worked with uh, a lab uh, here in California with uh, Jack Loomis in the Loomis lab, and I looked at peripheral vision. Uh, many, many years ago, I had a poster at VSS. I think it was the first VSS in, uh, what was it, in Sarasota or something like that. Uh, in, I believe in, in 2000, 2001 or 2002 or something like that. So we go back a very, very long time. Um, and uh, we really uh, have been helping uh, use virtual reality for actually cognitive and vision science use cases basically for 20 years almost uh, originally as a research lab and then later on as a company and um you now on, on this page you see we also have a bunch of commercial customers like larger companies but we really come out of academia we have been helping uh, academic research labs to use virtual reality and so um, we have obviously been super excited over the last couple of years uh, with oculus coming in and basically uh, making things much more affordable and much more usable. Um, so like, like for one example is, is one thing that Sado is going to, to show us uh, in, in practice, but eye tracking, right? And so on, on eye tracking, um, you, you might all realize that an eye tracking setup in an HMD was at best experimental 20 years ago. And there was some companies that were integrating into HMDs on a, on a, on a one, like one-on-one -on -one basis, which like as our research has had an integration that uh, Arlington eye tracking had an integration. Um, and we were always fighting uh, to get eye tracking integrations into the more high-end commercial HMDs, but it was always hard because like just integrating from one customer is a lot of effort, right? <laughs> so we went through this fight for a long time. And now you can go on Amazon and you order the Vive Pro Eye for like 1,400 or 1,500 bucks and you can just get a reasonable, a pretty good eye tracker. They have licensed Toby technology. HTC has licensed Toby. You get a pretty good eye, eye tracker integrated into an HMD for a consumer price tag um, that previously only the eye tracker would have cost you 10,000 bucks or more. So it's, it's, it's really amazing how these things become available right now. And it puts the question back to the researcher which is effectively now you have to see what you can do with that tech and which questions you can you can ask that are meaningful uh, or where you can find out more about human uh, cognition just using some of this tech and asking the right questions. It's actually in a way pretty exciting times right now. So that's pretty much the background here like on, on WorldVis. Like I remember the like the at VSS was the first time we have shown uh, like, how would I say, like, uh, I wouldn't say uh, an untethered, like, backpack-based, like, kind of like the little com computer-based VR walking experiment with the Oculus, like, the first DK, DK1 that they had. 
and it was uh, it was a huge success as a demo night. And um, yeah, so you you now can can use these tech uh, tech technology means that are out there in order to like run much more meaningful experiments, like in in many different ways. Like obviously, when I worked at the uh, Loomis lab, like we always did like uh, pathfinding and navigation in in certain spaces, and we had a I think a 45 foot cable and and a space that was big enough to use it, but it was still very limited as such, right? And now you can go with a backpack and you don't have a cable anymore. So the directionality of a cable is gone. So it gives a lot of options right now. So anyway, what we do is we work with, we are, we are providing a software layer called Wizard, which is Python based and gives you full control when you run experiments. Um, we have like definitely uh, created a bunch of good tool chains around collaboration, both for on-site and remote collaboration. Um, we are able, when you ask collaboration, we are able to synchronize different settings by the millisecond so you can get the data synchronized between different participants, which is interesting from some, uh, some of the cognitive scientists uh, that are doing experiments. They might want to be able to record data and people's uh, physio uh, in millisecond resolution. And uh, we are uh, natively integrating a lot of hardware which obviously is very important if you want to run an experiment that has other things like shutter glasses or uh, uh, switches or um, even even crude things like a fan or a loudspeaker or something could be integrated into your virtual reality experiment and fully controlled basically down to the millisecond. So as such, uh, I don't want to bore you more because we have promised to get down to the boat, <laughs> down, down to the guts this time. And um, I give the control over to uh, our, my colleague, Sato, who is going to show us how to put an eye tracking experiment together in a very short time frame, in six minutes, <clears throat> just all the way from, from the code to an experiment. And um, that's super exciting. So I hand this over to him here. And last but not least, Dan already said it, but just to say it again, um, we have a second session, which is um, in two hours, uh, Florida time or two hours California time, um, which is uh, effectively a session where we all try to meet in VR. So if you have a VR device or even if you have just a desktop, I, I would recommend try that out. It'd be nice to meet you there. I'll be in there in that VR world, like our colleague Andy Beal, who is uh, the uh, professor behind World this, like we'll, we'll be in there. And uh, there will be a bunch of us, uh, Dan will be in there, Sato will be in there, and we can mingle in that. VR meeting room if you if you get it working on your computer. So it'd be cool to see some of you there and, and basically talk to each other rather than me just giving a presentation. So I guess uh, Sato is now on with the presentation here, right? So I switch off. Sato, I can't hear you yet. Okay. Okay. So I know. Okay. So yeah, I'm just gonna um, walk you really quick showing you uh, how you can set up your own eye tracking experiment. And as this guy mentioned, this is with the uh, WorldViz VR eye tracking analytics lab. Um, the code that you um, send out to download, that's just a very scaled down version of this. That's just allowing just to collect some fixation data. But this uh, full code here allows you to collect things such as um, number of fixations, average total fixation time, uh, pupil diameter size, along with the timestamps of when you're running the experiment, you can visualize a gaze intersect, um, a 3D gaze path visualization of where your eyes were looking, things like heat maps, so kind of a lot of things like that. But I'm just going to really quickly, quickly kind of run you through how this is set up. So let me my model here. So this here is um, just a model that I have already set up. So you can, I'll show you in a little bit too how you can get your own models of uh, sites like Sketchfab or if you have maybe some 3D modeling programs where you have a model that you've created. And if you already have your, so in here, these are paintings, which I'm using for fixation objects that I'm collecting data on. If you wanted to add objects separately, then here in this tool, you would go up to file, add. And this is a tool called inspector. So this comes with wizard. So if I'm in the wizard software here, this is under tools, inspector. And you won't, you won't be following along on this one. I'm just going to run this through really quick, showing the full features. And then after this, I'll show the uh, scaled down one, which you could follow along with. And so 
if I just click on any of these models, so this is like a painting, this is a real earring painting. Essentially, what I'm all I need to do is just copy the name of that model, and then I go back over to the wizard, and this is act the actual full script. And the only things that you really need to do just to get the basic experiment started is just swap out the name of the environment and the name of the objects that you're collecting, collecting uh, data on. So since I have that copied, I just put in the name there that's part of that model, and then I put also the name here so that when I'm writing this to a data file, it'll write the name correctly. And if you wanted to add more than three objects or less, you just copy and paste this line, basically. So now I'm just going to select a couple more objects really quick. <clears throat> and we're going to take the starry night. And so essentially, I'm just right clicking, getting the copy of the name. You could also go and you could rename the object if you wanted to give it a, a different name than the model already had. And this template script, it comes with some objects already in there, like a soccer ball, basketball, but so I'm just essentially replacing them. And then the last thing that you need to do is replace the name of the scene. And so you would go and save your scene into the resources folder. And so here I have the scripts for this eye tracking lab. And then here in the resources folder, I already have this uh, installed there, but I'll just save it again. And now in Visitor, if I want to go and get that name, I can just right click here on the tab and open up my folder that has my resources and then just copy the name of this scene model. And that's essentially it. I mean, that's ready to go now. But if, for instance, I wanted to change the fixation time, right now I have it at 500 milliseconds, um, you would just change this threshold number here. So that's right now set to 0.5. And then the next thing that you're going to want to do um, is change which hardware you're using. So we have the Vive Pro I, the uh, Pupil Labs, the original Toby integration, and also a desktop mode, which you would run this today when you're trying this out. Because this is a difference if you don't have an iTrack headset to use. You could run a desktop version and it just simulates an iTracker. And so I have the Vive Pro I chosen. And so now I should be able to just uh, run this and I'll put on my Headset. Take a second. And you could put in participant name information if you want, or you could skip this. But this is just so when you're creating your data file, you can um, have some way to find which uh, participant was doing which experiment. So now put this headset in. Give me a second. And so now when I put the space bar, it'll start recording where I'm looking. And I could turn the uh, the gaze intersect on or off as a participant. By default, that's off because you might not want the participant to be seeing their own uh, gaze intersect. It's basically like the midsection between the two pupils. Okay, so now if I go to the mode where now I'm going to analyze um, where I looked, I have these um, 3D gauge points, just kind of like all the different places I scanned around in the scene with my eyes. And so that's uh, one visualization that you could use. And now I'm going to go back and show the next thing. And so now this is just a, one way of visualizing the, the fixations. And so I had targeted the Mona Lisa painting, the girl earring, and the Van Gogh Starry Night. And um, I'm taking it. yeah, so that shows that I fixated, which means I looked at it for more than 500 milliseconds at the Mona Lisa painting three times, the girl earring four times, and the Van Gogh one two times. And then this is the total fixation time and the average fixation time. But now if I want to go and get some more data, there's a, a data folder in here. And now I can see the timeline of when I fixated on each object. So the first fixation at 1.6 seconds. This is another summary of the fixation fixations. And then 
this file, which is the tracking data file, it gives me a timestamp of when the experiment started, basically when I pressed the spacebar to start it, and then the X, Y, Z position of my gaze intersect along with the pupil diameter at that time. So another helpful thing that I could do now is, so when I go into the recordings folder, I can save a recording of this experiment and then be able to go back to a certain time in the experiment and see like when I fixated or when I was looking at this object at 7.15 seconds, then I could kind of go back and look at that same time and see what metrics I'm trying to uh, focus on. And this uh, tracking data file can also be saved as a CSV. So for instance, uh, if you want to look at it in um, a spreadsheet editor, then you could go and get more uh, statistics like the average people diameter size, for instance, might be one that you would then want to, want to calculate. And another thing I was going to point out really quick, so in the code, as I mentioned, you're really only just swapping out a few lines just to get the environment and the, the models. but there's a special that section here where if you wanted to have something happen when a fixation is uh, initiated, then this would be the on gaze time function. And this is where it might be where if you're sending a trigger to something like a physiological measuring device, you want to kind of see what the heart rate was at that time, you could put in the code to send an event here. Or this might be if you wanted to do a gaze based interaction, maybe having an object change position or size or change color, this would be the function there for uh, when the fixation starts. And this is a function for when you first um, look at an object and this is a function when the gaze ends. So that's if you want to go and kind of customize the code a little bit more. And another thing I was going to show is uh, that you can do the same thing with 360 videos or images, and these could be stereoscopic or monoscopic um, in images or videos. So now if I run this, we'll kind of run the same experience with the 360 video. <clears throat> so this is Warehouse Direct Release International in Santa Barbara. Now I can see the same overlay on the three scale and I could get all the same data. So that's just showing you as models. Um, then you would just basically move your video here and you would save your video resources folder as well. Uh, one of the last things I was just going to show really quick is also just uh, generating heat maps. So here I have <clears throat> and so now that saved where I was looking to a file that now it's going to generate to a heat map. So the heat map is copy out um, these three lines of code, comment out, and then you run the three different generating a heat map. And then the last thing is to uh, view that heat map. And I could view this in a headset from a desktop. Right now I'm viewing it in desktop mode. And then I could adjust the intensity of the heat map and things like that. <clears throat> and I just want to mention also, I mean, this can also, some of the features of this can also be run with multiple users. There's some limitations when you're running multiple users, but we have that option as well. And so now to get to um, a very, as I said, a very scaled down version of the code, which if you've had a chance to download that, then you could try to follow along. Otherwise, I mean, if you get stuck, you could 
ask a question and we'll try to get to that at the end or maybe we could also just uh, help you after the webinar at some point we'll get your email <clears throat> but the first thing I guess if you haven't already is you would install Wizard, and then if it um, doesn't come up on your desktop then you could find a Wizard here it should install to your program files um, world viz wizard sticks and then you can find the wizard icon here if it doesn't if you don't have a shortcut to it and then what you're going to do is get that that code with another download and so you would unzip that code and then open, just uh go to that folder where the code is and there's the file called gaze time and to open it in wizard you could either click and drag into the wizard IDE window here, which this is like the main wizard coding window. Or you can go right click and edit, but then you would have to have wizard set up as your Python editor. And so similar to the other one, um, this is just copying the name of your whatever model you chose and the objects. So in that other download folder, there was also some assets that we provided for you. So you can, for instance, take like um, and then I'll take a, the modern lobby. So I have this already set to open up an inspector. Otherwise, what you're going to need to do is go to Wizard Tools Inspector, and then go to File Open, and then find one of those models that we sent you in the asset pack. And open this in here. I'm sorry if this this goes a little quick. I know that it might be some other issues that come up. But I guess in the scope of the time we have here, we wouldn't be able to. Um, get everything going. I saw someone was asking if this works for the Mac. It actually is only a PC based program unless you're running some like virtual PC or something. <clears throat> and so this is the modern lobby. I guess I already added the uh, an object in here. And so I was going to add a couple more. So you go up to file add and maybe I'll add um, an Oculus headset. And to make this a little easier to see, you can just click here on this top root node for the uh, environment and then just minimize. You know, it's a little cleaner and you can see a little easier. So I have this Oculus headset. And up here, just like in other 3D sort of modeling programs, you have translation tools. So I could move, scale, rotate, or I could type in numbers here. So <clears throat> I'm just going to put this at like eye height 1.8, see it over the side, and then probably go back about one meter in Z so that it's uh, easier to see. And if you click on a model, it'll it'll click it'll select one of the uh, model nodes. But to get to the top node, you can do the page up key on your keyboard. One helpful sort of shortcut. <clears throat> and so now I'm going to add one more model. I guess I'm just going to compare headsets. So I'll just put in 1.8 for the Y height and back 1Z. So now my scene is basically set up and I'm just going to save this. But what I want to do is actually want to save as and save it into the same location where you have the script that you downloaded, which was the gaze time example. So I'm just going to keep this modern lobby. And now once that's set up, it's just copy and paste the name. So it's similar to how the other one was. So copy this name and then just copying the name of the uh, objects which is PSVR <clears throat> and you always copy it into two places because this is where you label it for the data file this is where it's actually looking for the object itself And so most of the work might really just be setting up the scene how you want it because getting the uh, objects into the code is pretty straightforward. And now since I said this is a very scaled down version, it's if you look down on the bottom here at the uh, interactive window, it's just collecting fixation data. So once you look at it for more than 0.5 seconds, then it's then it also saves how long, how many seconds you look at or milliseconds. And uh, 
that's basically it for the um for the really simple code like we we sent so see if there's any other quick questions um I'll take a second to look at some of these questions to see if there's anything simple. No, I guess this is the one. Yeah, this is this is a PC-based uh, program. Okay, so the next thing I was just going to show a little bit more about Wizard itself and some of the quick ways you can kind of get going with Wizard. So there's a tutorial, which is also a link that we could uh, you could get to it in the documentation actually. So if you go to any um, Chrome browser, you could type in Wizard documentation and then get to the uh, what I'm doing is getting started introduction tutorial and so the first thing so with wizard you always want to have everything in, in its own folder so you just want to go and create a new folder and then call it whatever you want to call it wizard tutorial so you just create a new folder on your desktop and then you can choose one of those environment models whatever models you want to use and put that also into the same folder and there's not a lot of code for just getting a scene up and going so that's just these two uh, lines of code just bring in two of Wizard's command libraries. And then this third line here is viz.go that just opens up an application window with Wizard's default navigation with no hardware um, attached. And then this next line is just bringing in your model. And this, this line here is just some of the models look better with different types of lighting. So I'm disabling the, the default Wizard lighting. And so let me jump back to Wizard here. <clears throat> so this is that same code. I'm in a different model here, but this is now just without any hardware. And then to get to that inspector program, either you go up to tools, inspector, or also there's this resources tab. You can just double click here on the model and it'll open it up in inspector. And this is where you get other, add other models, kind of set up your scene. Another important thing is to check the size of your scene. So Wizard actually uses the meters. And so if there's something you get off a of Sketchfab and maybe it's an Imperial or something, you just want to look yeah, down here. Actually, sorry. So this is a, the measurements in meters. And the last thing really quick is the VizConnect. And this is a simple tool that just allows you to um, set up your hardware configuration. So if I go and save this in the same location, um, let's see. I just need to figure out where I had to save. Yeah, so once this opens up, there's um, some presets that are just kind of like default, like HTC Vive, um, Oculus, projection caves, a full body tracking using Vive trackers. Or if you go to the advanced mode, you can get into a lot more, like over 100 different types of hardware devices. So which I really quick some of those. So things like data gloves, um, full body tracking, lots of different. Uh, so we've just kind of been doing VR for so long that we've integrated with just a wide, wide variety of hardware. So all that stuff. And so now if I, um, want to run it with the hardware. The only thing then you change is instead of vizconnect.go, viz you just put in vizconnect.go. And then you put in the name of your uh, hardware configuration, which I just named it vizconnect config. And so I just copy that and put that into my script. And now when I run it, it should run in the way. Uh, if I pick up my headset here. Yeah, so that's basically it. So it's the same setup if you wanted to run this in a projection system or even much more complicated hardware. It's about the same, really just changing that line of code, what your what your hardware configuration is. And to mention with the model, so GLTF is a very uh, now widely adopted standard for 3D models. So you get a very consistent result across different platforms. And so that's probably the, the most recommended one now. And we also uh, do most standard model formats like FBX, Collada, 
you know, OBJ and stuff like that as well. You just might have mixed uh, results depending on how those were compiled with the textures and everything. That's why GLTF is a very standard one to use. So I went through that. Um, and this is just kind of showing you just uh, some examples of some hardware. So if you wanted to connect, for instance, like a physiological measurement device, so we integrate with Biopack with their acknowledged software. Um, you could go on our website and look at Vizard under supported devices to see all the devices that we support. And some places to get 3D models, um, Sketchfab is, a, like I said, a really good content library. It's got over 150,000 Creative Commons free models. And if you just download as the GLTF format, then you just uh, unzip that, it will come right into uh, Vizards without any issues, except for maybe the size. You might want to check the size on that. And that would be you go into Inspector and just kind of scale the, the size down to what you want. And you could use, yeah, obviously, 3D modeling programs. Uh, photogrammetry, maybe if, if people are aware of that or not, but it's a new sort of way that you can do sort of 3D scanning, but just using a phone. You could even use a smartphone if you have proper lighting. And um, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind for setup, like some types of materials are easier to capture than others, but essentially you just get a series of photographs and you use a software that will automatically um, stitch that into a 3D model, like something like Metashape or Autodesk Remake. And then just these are just a few resources for avatars, so like Mixamo has a content library of avatars. And, and now actually there's the new, uh, the Rocket Box avatars are available again. So you could ask us about that. There's a lot of avatar choices with that. And then obviously uh, 360 videos and images are really easy assets to get in to VR because you can even just use your smartphone and even take a photosphere mode and that'll turn into a 360 image or you could get a cheap camera like a Gear 360 for 120 bucks. and or something like Insta Pro, which gives you a much higher quality, like 8K um, stereoscopic video. And so, yeah, that's it. Now I'm going to hand it back to Dan, and I guess we'll try to get to some of the questions. Yeah, thanks, Sato. Um, give me one second here. I'm actually uh, just sending out a couple of links that are related to some of the more recent points that you've made. So I just linked out the documentation website. Um, and I'm going to link out uh, some uh, Sketchfab here as well, so you guys can go uh, <clears throat> check those out. And uh, yeah, I actually, you know, I'm moderating the the questions here, and I think we were able to answer most of the questions that came in uh, during this presentation. So uh, I haven't seen any additional questions past uh, the the questions about our upcoming meeting. Um, again, we've also linked to that meeting uh, a little earlier here uh, where you can meet us today. Uh, we'll be doing a Mozilla Hubs meeting so people can come in and we can actually talk with each other. It'll be pretty fun. Um, if anybody has any other questions right now, you know, feel free to shoot them our way. Uh, you can also at any point contact us, um, you know, via email. We are very responsive. Uh, we have a forum that I can also uh, send links out to. Um, so we'd be happy, uh, you know, just to get your guys' feedback on on how this went for you uh, working with the uh, demo version of Visible of, of Wizard and uh, going through the process there. So um, yeah, I'm not sure uh, if there's any other questions. I'll I'll, I'll hold on for a second here, um, and uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll I'll uh, give it another couple minutes. But um, let me go ahead check this out. Um, we do have a uh, feedback survey that would be great if you all could uh, let us know um, what you thought of this presentation and uh, if there's anything else that we can do for you in terms of helping you get set up with a, with a VR experiment, uh, we'd be happy to help. Um, it doesn't look like we're getting any more questions here, so I think uh, that might be, that might be yeah, it for well. today. Then, then uh, I can hop on one more time also. I, I want to thank everybody from the VSS crowd who has been part of this uh, uh, unusual satellite event. Uh, we ha it looks like we had about the same crowd as last year. <laughs> last year in a physical room and this time in a virtual. So, um, yeah, like uh, the guys like I 
if you have questions about eye tracking and virtual reality, we certainly are a company that has been seeing seeing this for many years, and so shoot them our way. Like you can always email um, support at roadless.com, uh, or if you want to buy something, sales at roadless.com, and we are always happy to help with the knowledge and experience we have. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Dan, also for guiding us yeah. with it. And thanks, even even more thanks to Sato here, uh, who has prepared <laughs> this uh, very carefully with all the downloads and the wizard script, so you guys can just try it out on your own computers. So I hop off again here yep. on the on the video stream. Fado. Yeah, I just wanted to mention re really Yeah, I just want to mention really quick too, if there are other eye tracking metrics that you're interested in, just let us know because they could um most likely be easily added to this is is um same template that I was showing earlier. So and also just keep in mind, like I said, the code that we sent out was just a very scaled down version. So if you're interested in the full template with all of the analytics and everything, just, then just let us know. We could send you more information on that. So, yeah. And that's also in the survey, I guess, just if you have other things that you're looking to do with eye tracking that maybe you want to see added to that template or are interested if it's already there. One thing I yep. might just Thanks show everybody. you all really fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go okay, ahead. But, um, I, I... Go, go ahead, then. Oh, uh, let me just see if I'm still presenter. I actually have the, the full specification document for the eye tracking add-on right here that people might find a little interesting. Um, but we don't have to worry too much about that. If anybody wants a full sheet of all of the different types of tools and, and uh, functions that you can uh, edit in the eye tracking analytics software, shoot us an email and uh, we'll be happy to send that to you. Um, go ahead and... Uh, show my screen really fast so you guys can just see this document. So this document, if you guys want to take a look at this, it gives you all the information about uh, what's included with the eye tracking analytics lab um, and really just kind of walks you through all the different pieces of data that you can adjust. So uh, shoot us an email at sales at worldviz.com or support at worldviz.com and uh, we'll get that over to you and you guys can take a look at this and uh, see if it might meet your needs. Um, thanks again for joining us today and uh, looking forward to hopefully seeing you again uh, in about an hour and a half here uh, in our Mozilla Hubs meeting. I uh, hope you guys all have a great day. Take care.